IPXs. We're here at Computex 2025 in Taiwan, where we'll be talking to a company called PolyN. They make a neuromorphic analog signal processing chip, an NASP, that's used to make your life, voice processing, so much easier. Let's go ahead and talk to Alexander, who can tell us loads more about their new chip. Neuromorphic analog signal processing. Let's just start, what is meant by that neuromorphic part? Uh, so neuromorphic it means we use a neural net for data process. It's a two-way process data. You can use fixed algorithms, mm -hmm. use algebra formula to change the data. Yeah. Or uh, you use a neural model, mm -hmm. which you train towards a lot of data. And it's like a biological evolution. Mm -hmm. You take the general architecture model, uh, pass many data through this, uh, show what is good, what is bad, and finally the structure change and answer for your question. If you need to separate cats photo from dogs, you have a thousand of photo and you tell your model that is cats, that is dog. Mm -hmm. Finally they train and separate. That is a generic idea, so, but of course it's more complicated in reality. <laughs> it's generally... So, what do you see as being the advantages of having a neuromorphic process as compared to something like a digital process? Uh, generally, uh, uh, first of all, a uh, neuromorphic model uh, or neural net model or, uh, based on neural net processing uh, works better with uh, real data, yeah. which is noisy, which is not predictable, not right. clear. It's a better. And second, potential opportunity. Uh, neural net, it's a parallel data processing. Like okay. our brain work. Yeah. And we unlock these benefits in our products of the parallel data processing. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the bottom of what we've got here. What is your product? It is a physical IC? Yeah, it's a chip. <coughs> our final product is a chip. We use a standard CMOS process uh, to create a physical neural net structure. Mm -hmm. So it means not a, not a digital model where you calculate step-by-step -step operation. Yeah. We physically create thousands of neurons, connect these neurons to structure, yeah. and that structure uh, work equal to initial sourcing model. Yeah. And yes, we present this in standard silicon. Mm -hmm. That is our benefit. Final, our product, it's a standard CMOS IC. Yeah. So where does this IC fit into the grand picture of my circuit? What are my inputs? What are my outputs? What does it connect to? Uh, we in an in input level. Uh, our role is pre-processing raw data in uh, sensor line. Mm -hmm. If you can look again for, uh, for our head, we have uh, sense and brain. Yep. Uh, we have eyes, ears, all that. We in sensor level. That is our line of efficiency to pre-process data from sensor. Brain, it's a digital system. Yes. We are not talking here, so it's still digital, mm -hmm. but we are extremely efficient on pre-processing the data. Okay. What do you feel the main applications of this chip are? Where do you see it being used? Is it good for video? Is it good for audio? If inside there, what are your main things that this could be sensing and, and decoding? Uh, so, generally speaking, it can be applicable for all sensors. Okay. Uh, the audio sensors, video sensors, bio sensors. Temperature? Tem temperature, it's not critical because okay. temperature, it's, uh, you measure temperature one time per, I don't know. Yeah, okay. But uh, for voice, uh, microphone, vibration, uh, bio sensor like uh, PPG, ACG, and this type, a low resolution camera, and all these type of sensor, uh, ultra, ultrasound, all type of this sensor uh, mm -hmm. we can efficiently work so with that all hours. Yeah, there's one big question that we always ask on this channel. It's before you came along, how did an engineer do what this IC allows you to do? How did an engineer efficiently process analog signals away from a microcontroller and how yeah, did it work uh, before you? The standard way today, we take analog signal, mm -hmm. then we use uh, ADC, analog to digital converter. Mm -hmm. So we convert analog to digital, and then we have uh, DSP or other CPU to process this data. It works per perfectly now, but the only one problem is uh, power consumption. Okay. When you need to go to really low power, microwatt level, mm -hmm. and digital system. Uh, 
it's not allowed this specifically if you need uh, low latency mm -hmm. the problem of digital system uh, it always vice versa if you need uh, low latency you need higher power because you go up to frequency yes if you need ultra low power so your latency is higher because you you need to go to low frequency of data process mm -hmm. uh, we solve this problem because our solution finally is through parallel it's no latency it's yeah. always a few microseconds mm -hmm. uh, so again uh, we are not create something absolutely new engineers know how to process voice many decades but the question is how to uh, deliver this technique so yes. we don't need ADC we work directly with analog signal mm -hmm. it saves power and then we process this in our analog narrow core and output is digital. Our output is digital, so we integrate with standard system, with standard CPU, and then system works as as this. Okay. So integrating a new part into my designs is always difficult. It's weighing up pros and cons about how easy it is and if it's really worth it. How easy is it to get voice commands onto this? How easy is it out of the box to get this IC working? Uh, so we have. Uh, two parts of our system. Mm -hmm. First part, it's a fixed pre-processing of the voice. Okay. Uh, for example, if you're talking about voice command, uh, we did uh, neural net model before we trained it. Uh, we did uh, uh, digital twin. Uh, like, for example, here we have a digital twin of our voice command system. Okay. And if I sell uh, Angela, Angela, next channel, so it's detect uh, yeah. command, uh, uh, and we can train and uh, build the command uh, list. Mm -hmm. Then we use our own compiler, it's our own, own proprietary developer, to uh, transfer this digital model for our neural core. Mm -hmm. And we still have a flexible layer to update command list. That is standard SDK, so if you want to add command, you just print and upload to the system yeah so it's uh, very flexible yeah and output it's a standard digital interface so when we recognize common we just send by spi common code and system know what to do so integration that's very easy Beautiful. Uh, we take the front line we have a connection to a microphone directly we process everything voice detection speaker recognition denoising and then we detect the common and now it is uh, just common number five and that's yeah. it. that really easy integrate for uh, top level structure and then you can decide where you put this uh, chip in uh, remote control in uh, uh, ai headset for radio for a smart home control box everywhere amazing IPXs, if you think that something like this could be for you, we'll have some links down. <coughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, go to that one. <coughs> Probably blocked up the throat. <laughs> IPXs, if you think that this chip solution could be something that you're interested in, we'll have some links down descriptions where you can apply to evaluate this. Alexander, thank you yes. very much for your time.